Hello, PMC fans. Welcome. I am Noah JTRA, the Rock Nerdactyl, with D Pad Gamer of Orlando City Superiors. Coach, I should say. The coach. Either one works. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All righty. So we are doing some interviews. In fact, this is the first interview of the PMC, and we are ready to get into this. So first off, uh, I'm here to welcome you to the league. Welcome to the PNC. Thank you. All right. Are you excited? I am hyped, man. I am so hyped. I've, I'm ready to get out of the uh, the analyst chair and start coaching. Nice. Well, looking forward to seeing what kind of plays you will be making. All right. So let us begin. How do you? What are your thoughts on the league in general? And how did you find out about the PMC league? So I really, really love the PMC League, the community is really great. Um, you know, we've, we've had a bit of a, a rocky go with the D-League, but there's been a lot of uh, uh, big family situations that have been going on. So, you know, it's totally understandable, but everyone, it really works well together. So um, I'm really happy to be part of this community. And uh, how I found the League, I it was actually, I just got my capture card and a brand new rig. So I was looking on uh, Twitter to see if I could find anyone who was recruiting. And uh, Trev actually found me oh, and okay. pointed me towards Specs. Um, so after you know about a week talking with Specs, um, we hit it off really well, and he put me into an analyst position for the D League, and just said, uh, "I want you as part of the season two. So that's how I got into it. Awesome. And what? Are, and you said your thoughts that you love the community. I really like that you mentioned that. That is my favorite part. I'm getting to meet a lot of people. Uh, new people, especially being an interviewer, which I'm really excited to get to meet a lot of new people, such as yourself. And then also just Jay Specs is a great guy, and he's really just doing a good job running this. So shout out to you, Jay Specs. All right, so what do you think about the league format? Do you like it? Do you think there's any changes that need to be made? Um, it, it all depends on what mons get through with the suspect test. <laughs> okay, that's yeah. <laughs> to be that's honest, right. no, but um, I I absolutely love league format, and there's four big reasons for me why I love it. Um, the, the biggest reason is that on the battle spot, there is no 6v6, mm. and that drives me crazy. Like, <laughs> Pokemon started off as 6v6, and then Pokemon's just like, nah, we're not going to use it anymore. Yeah. So, <laughs> that drives me insane. So, I, I love the counter team league that forces people to use a 6v6 team. Um, the second thing that I really, really love is that I hate building for generic mons that you have no idea what's coming you know it's mm. like okay you figure that a kangaskhan is coming you figure that a garchomp is coming so you build a team to kind of counter those things but you can't tailor your mons to handle your opponent's team it's just whatever they bring whatever you bring and hopefully you've got a good set so you know it's that that can be really really frustrating um the third thing, like I've already said, I just love the community that mm -hmm. uh, leagues build, um, especially the PMC. It's it's like a friends and family kind of situation, you know. And um, the last thing is that um, you know, in in the battle spot and in Smogon, you pretty much see the same mons over and over and over. You've got like ten mons that are like the elite, and that's what you're going to see at least three or four of them on every single team, and that gets really frustrating. And I'm part of the problem, you know, when I play on Smogon, I pick the same mons because I'm good with them, but it also doesn't expand my repertoire. Mm. So in League, you know, you're you're going to get sniped, especially in where I'm, I am in the, the League. We, we just got our, our ladder situation, and I'm first in the pool. So, you know, I get the first mon, which is great, but then I've got to wait, you know, 26 picks to get to mine again so I'm gonna get sniped and I'm not gonna get all the mons that I want so it's gonna force me to play with mons that I'm not used to yeah at first you mentioned that on battle spot like you said there's people are using the same 10 mons I come from a VGC background so I don't know if you watch nationals but there's a lot of Groudons so <laughs> I understand completely where you're coming from there you also mentioned that you were first uh, congratulations on being first pick, but do you think, is there a best spot to be? Like, is the middle better, or where, in your opinion, is the best spot to be for uh, picks? It's it's really hard to say. You know, I mean, like, I am stoked because I get to pick my favorite mom, so we'll talk about that a little bit later, I think, with the with the draft. But um, I really think, yeah, being, like, sixth or seventh is probably best because you're you're always 
after you get your pick, you're always only like six or seven away from your next pick. Mm. So I think that's personally better. I mean, it's nice to have the snake style where you get two mons in a row. So I'm going to like that. Yeah. But waiting, what, 20, I think it's 25 picks. Yes. Yeah, gonna, like it's going to drive me insane. All right. So do you have any prior league experience? Um, so nothing as far as YouTube goes. Um, I have done a few Smogon tournaments, um, but that's not the same kind of thing as a league. Yeah. Um, I've done some personal leagues, you know, with my friends where mm -hmm. we're able to orchestrate that, but nothing to the level of the PMC. So uh. um, as far as that goes, you know, I I bow to the knowledge of Specs and Cloud. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So do you... You also, I forgot to mention this, so you elaborated on that you like how you get to prepare for specific mods because it is like a draft-based format. Do you think that since both you and your opposing coach, whoever you'll be battling that week, are building teams specifically to face off against each other, do you think that that will make for better battles and definitely more intense matches? Absolutely, yeah. I, I mean, I think part of it is, so like, for example, like I was saying with Battlespot, like, Let's say I'm playing with a Mega Kangaskhan. I will build it with, you know, like enough to survive, you know, maybe an earthquake from a Garchomp if it's max attack. But I can't say if it's going to be choice or scar, you know, all that stuff. Because mm -hmm. you just have to go with, you know, what you feel is best. Whereas with this, you can look at, okay, so like if my opponent has, let's say, a Garchomp, I can say at maximum he's, you know, banded, max attack. I can say, how much do I need to invest to live? Mm. You know, and you say, this is my dedicated switch and this is my counter or this is my... And you plan for that because you can guess he's going to bring, you know, out of 11 mons, you can guess pretty safely that at least three of them. So you can say, yeah. all right, so I'm going to I'm gonna build it for this. And even if they're planning for me to counter this, I know I can survive it and then switch in on another switch. So it makes for a lot more fun. Um, when when you can build a specific team oh yeah definitely something else is i just thought of and i'm pretty sure actually this is very common i'm new to the league formatting in general like this new style which i love so hidden power is actually an interesting move because you can give any pokemon specific move and you, let's say you're up against a ferrothorn fortress or dragon knight something that has a four times weakness salamence even do you like that the ability to let's say you could do pokemon that would normally be weak to that mod but then run hidden power that's four times Super effective. Do you like to do surprise things such as that? I do. I actually my favorite thing to do is natural gift oh, because it does it does exactly the same thing, but it's physical. So it's it's a lot less expected than even hidden power. I've seen it run a lot where you know you're not going to run hidden power scissor. Yeah. And people tend to forget that natural gift is a thing. So if I run a physical natural gift, you know, fairy type move on a scissor or whatever you know what I'm saying like mm -hmm. if they switch a fire type in and I have a water um, natural gift yeah that's gonna be extremely surprising to them and I love doing that kind of stuff so when it comes to team building what do you think is your greatest strength when it comes to designing a team um, I really like the synergy between the team and what I try to do every year is um, whenever I, whenever or every season whenever I draft um, or whenever I build any team, really, I try to pick not just one, but two mons that are my win condition. Mm. And then I build the entire rest of the team to support that. And then with my how my play style is, I tend to play very... I don't like playing safe, but I don't like playing aggressive. I always try to make the middle play. So, for example, like, um, we've seen a lot of times, like, in the GBA and um, UCL and stuff like that, where... Um, People will make, they're like, oh, you know what? There's no way they're going to stay in because, you know, X, Y, and Z. So I'm going to do this crazy play that's going to do no damage if they don't switch. And then they don't switch, and then they lose all their momentum. Mm. And they could have just done a middle ground play. Like, I think two weeks ago, uh, A-Drive was in with his uh, Mega Altaria, and he did a Fire Blast on a Mon that took no damage from it when he could have just done a return and even if the person switched it would have done a butt ton of damage yes. so it's like I, I don't like making those plays so I think the combination of building a team that supports itself and then not making crazy plays are my two strengths alrighty sounds 
like some cool plays are going to be made by you. Looking forward to that. I liked how you talked about how you like to do the middle play, like not play too safe, or but also not be too aggressive because then that can overly cost you. So I do like how you talked about how you like to be in the middle. I think that's a really you know interesting and also smart choice. But when it, so you also t you cover this a lot already. But I, you know, next question is when it comes to battling, you know, what do you think is your greatest strength? And I think you already elaborated on that when you said you know using synergy and making the you know good middle play. It's not too aggressive, not too safe. Is there any other strengths you wish to talk about? Um, yeah, I mean, like, you know, I, I really like uh, building a team where you're not, you're not like, shoeholed into something. So, for mm -hmm. example, um, I don't like Mons that they're only, they have, like, a niche situation yeah. where, like, okay, I'm going to hit you four times super effective, so I'm going to bring this Mon. And then they don't bring that mon. Mm -hmm. That drives me crazy. So like, for I like mons that are going to be able to spam something that is not resisted by a lot of things on their team. So I love bringing like you know high damage return movers. Um, mm -hmm. I like doing stuff that can spam. Just you know spam a move that's going to hit their team the whole way across, mm -hmm. not something that's you know necessarily niche. So like if I'm facing a salamance, yeah, it's nice to have an ice beam, but if I can two hit KO you with two returns and I can live the hit that you're going to throw back, I'm going to do that instead just in case you switch. It's a middle ground play. So mm -hmm. um, it, it kind of goes back to those middle ground plays where I'd, I'd, just, I'd rather play it as um, where I can kill you in two hits instead of making a crazy hit You know that, that's going to throw me behind. Yeah, again, great answers. I really like that. So we talked about your greatest strengths. Are there any weaknesses that you have when it comes to battling? Um, so I think my biggest weakness is um, really when you get on tilt and then you start throwing mons out that don't make sense. Mm. Um, I talk about it in some of my videos how sometimes like the, the last, the last uh, game I actually played, I had 90 seconds left on the counter. So I got up, I left the camera even though I was live recording got a drink of water, came back and played, and then I was able to finish out. But sometimes I forget to do that, and when I get on tilt, it ugh, it's an ugly situation, so. Alrighty. So, I'm sorry, do you have any plans you want to go into the draft? Like, is there any, like, strategies you have in mind you want to go, or any specific mods you want to use? Yeah, so, because I get the first round pick, I'm picking my favorite Mega which is Megalopony. They're, nice. It, it's disgusting in league <laughs> format. It can, like I said, like I was saying before, it is the perfect middle ground player because... Especially with Scrappy. Yeah, with Scrappy, I can return everything, and whatever I can't return, I can high jump kick or drain punch. Hmm. It's ridiculous. It is an awesome, fast sweeper for the end of the game. And so because of that, I, and I know I'm getting that mon. Everyone else knows I'm getting that mon, <laughs> so I can talk about it. I don't care. But the next, the next mons that I'm going to be picking are going to be mons that are supporting that. Um, I want to be able to um, basically have dedicated switches for all of its weaknesses. Mm. So, you know, it's, it's weak to fighting, psychic, flying, and I can't remember the other one. I think fairy, yeah. Fairy. And fairy, and fairy. So I want to have, those are my first, those are going to be picks two through five are going to be mons that can counterbalance that weakness nice and my next question is you know how do you go about drafting but you again you already covered this earlier you like to build mods to support your you know favorite mega in this case and then to you know really help counterbalance the the weaknesses of that main mod yeah that's pretty much it i mean you know like so in this case you know megalopony is a fast sweeper so i'm going to need to have um, I, I like to have, you know, like a dedicated physical wall breaker, a dedicated special wall breaker, and then mons to cover those weaknesses. So that's pretty much how I'm going to build the team is, is based on that. And we'll see, you know, how it goes because I can't, waiting 25 picks, I can't, I can't really make a, a plan past that. I just, so I, I'm looking at like all of the psychic types and being like, what are the bulky psychic types? And then as the draft goes through, I'll just be crossing off the ones that I get sniped. <laughs> Alrighty. Um, do you believe, like, what, in your opinion, is the most overrated Pokemon in this format, specifically this league format? 
So are we talking mega or are we talking just in more? general? Just like in general, it can be uh, mega, non mega. So I, I kind of have two because I can't really narrow it down to just one. I have a mega and a non mega. I Perfect. think the most overrated mega is Mega Altaria. It mm. people go crazy for it, and there are so many other mons that I think do better. It's and the reason I say that is the same reason I pick my non mega as Mew because. They're good at a lot of things, but not great at anything. Mm, I see. I, I did like that you mentioned the Mew, because like, Mew's a great wild card Pokemon. Like, it can do a lot of things. So, good choice. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they're... So, I mean, I'm not saying either one is bad. No, but yeah, I, I get what you're saying. I, I just, I don't think they're worthy of round one or even round two picks. So, yeah. you know, that's that's kind of where I'm at with that. Alrighty. And I'm so, so was Mew your second overrated Pokemon? Yeah. All right. So just clarify. Mega, like mega, yeah. All right. So thank you for that. So, is there a monster we talk about overrated? Now, what do you think about underrated? Are there Pokemon that, in your opinion, like are underappreciated, or just people just look at and they don't—they really judge the book by its cover, as you would? Yeah, um, there are a few, um, and a lot of them, honestly, for me, are all in the really far down tier. So, like one of my favorites to draft. And I think it's a value pick. I've talked about it before, but in uh, other leagues and stuff, my favorite m underrated mon is actually Fletchender. Because it does exactly the same thing as Talonflame, but you have no recoil, and it's tier 4. What? I think its attack is only like 7 or 8 stats below. Wow. It, Fletchender, I didn't even think of that. It's a good choice. All right, but so are there any other mods or um, that you, yeah, that you I, want to mention at least? So, so that's my non-mega, but mega, I think the biggest is uh, Mega Metacham. I mean, if I don't get Mega Lopunny in leagues, I go for Mega Metacham. The thing is stupid. It's like it has the highest attack in the game that other than Mega Mawile, but we're not allowed to use that. So, mm. um, and it has, I think. I think it, it has at least two priority moves with Bullet Punch and Fake Out. Yep. And a Fake Out coming off of a Metacham does more than it does off of a Megalopony with Stab. Ooh. So you're doing, you know, probably a third of your your opponent's health with just a Fake Out. Wow. I did not know that. That's actually very impressive. Yeah, it's it's insane. And, you know, it's it's one of those things where it's like, if you outspeed it, your opponent has to pick them on to die. That's really how it works, because a high jump kick or a psycho cut or a bullet punch is going to do so much damage that it's pretty much a guaranteed one or two hit KO between the bullet punch and the high jump kick. Yeah. So, uh, thank you again for that. Very informative. Again, I'm new to this, so I did not know that Fake Out did a third. That's actually very impressive. I feel like if I get into format now, I wouldn't use Mega Meta Champ. <laughs> yeah, yeah, honestly, like I said, had I not gotten first pick... I would have probably gone with something like Manaphy as my first pick and then gone with a Metacham on my third or fourth round pick, you know, because nice. no one ever drafts it. Yeah, definitely love that. So good, again, good inspiration in general. I'm sorry, inspiration, good information in general. And uh, I hope most of my, the coaches I interview are more informative because I'm very clueless in this format. So uh, do you have any expectations for yourself, you know, going to the new season? Is there a certain, like, goal you have or you, do you, you want to make top cuts? Is there anything you expect for yourself? Um, so, looking at the, we we got uh, the, our our uh, conferences mm -hmm. now. We have our divisions and conferences now, and I think I'm honestly in the toughest conference or division, because Ooh. I've got uh, specs and cloud in the Ooh. same. <laughs> yeah. So like, for, and I have to face them twice. So really, my expectations going in, I would love to just get the wild card. If I can get the wild card, I will be thrilled. Awesome. Yeah. That wild card, definitely, yeah, uh, wild cards, let's talk about that. How do you feel about wild cards in general? Like, do you like that they have them, or? Absolutely, yeah, because I think that, you know, getting into it where you only have, you know, the top cut for each mm -hmm. each uh, division, there's been a lot of upsets, you know, and, and so, like, going go, talking about football, because I'm a big football fan, so, right. like, um, as an example, the Giants were a wild card, and then they beat the Patriots in 07. So it's like that that I love that. I love that you can have someone who would didn't do great in the season and then was able to finish up super strong. So Yeah. 
Alrighty. So, when it comes to battling, do you have any inspiration based on, like that any anything that inspires your style or your mods, anything in particular? Um, so like it's hard to say, like are you talking like inspiration off of other players or Yeah, insp- and well, I'm sorry, yeah, I should have said anything or anybody. Okay. Either. Um yeah, so like I really obviously there's people like, you know, Pokeaim and um and Envy and people like that who are just like gods in this format or in any format you know they touch pokemon and they win um so you know that that obviously has has something to do with it um but i think one of the biggest one of the ones that got me the most excited was um season three of the gba with mogwai his his play style is pretty similar to mine um and that season he really just showed why he was so good i wish he continued that but (laughs) um I, I really like how he plays, and I try to kind of copy that because he really likes the middle ground plays. He doesn't make a lot of stupid, aggressive plays or safe plays, and that's kind of how I try to play myself. Alrighty, thank you, and I'd like to thank you for your time for this interview. Just you know, for answering my questions, and I would like to wish you luck on the uh, into this league. Thank you. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. All right, one final question though. Who will be our PMC Season 2 champion? I would love, I would love to say it's going to be me, but, <laughs> but, I don't think so. <laughs> I think it's, I think it's either going to be Specs or Cloud, because they're so phenomenal, and I got to give them props. So, you know, like, I would love, I would love just to, to be, you know, maybe in the finals against one of them, but I, <laughs> it's, it's one of those situations where, you know, I'm not as skilled as they are, so it's going to be, it's going to come down to hacks if I, if I beat them. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, so many memories flooding me right now with the word hacks. Yep. (laughs) All right, well, again, thank you for your time, and again, guys, for those viewers at home, this is D-Pad Gamer of the Orlando City Superiors. Thank you again for your time. Thank you. All right. Well, thank you guys back at home, and I hope to see you on the next video. Bye, guys.